Legal and General Investment Management is one of the biggest asset managers in the UK. They've recognised that to provide the best service for their clients, they need to be able to understand the impact of climate change on different sectors and different companies within those sectors. At the heart of this is the energy system and the way that will evolve as we transition to a lower carbon economy. The way we generate power, heat our homes, transport ourselves and freight uh, and provide energy for industrial processes. We're working with them to develop a model of the overall global energy system that will allow them to explore different pathways for that transition and in turn understand the impacts for different sectors uh, and implications for the investment decisions that they're making on behalf of clients. How financial institutions respond to climate change is going to be one of the key aspects of how we as a society transition to a lower carbon economy because that in turn affects the allocation of capital to different types of investments in a transitioning world. The G20 has identified that if financial institutions don't understand those risks, there's a potential systemic threat to our financial stability and have issued clear guidelines about the use of scenarios to help uh, institutions understand and quantify those risks and opportunities on their portfolios. This model is a key part of us being able to work with clients to create those scenarios and build those into the risk frameworks that they use within their businesses to point them in the right direction. My name is Nick Stansbury. I work for Legal and General Investment Management. We're the wholly owned investment management subsidiary of Legal and General PLC, FTSE 100 company. My job is as head of global commodity research and I look after our commodity research and our energy strategy with a particular emphasis on understanding what the energy transition means for long-term institutional investors in our portfolios. The energy transition is really, really important to us as long-term focused investors because energy is a foundational building block of every activity that takes place in the global economy. Energy is a crucial input into everything that we care about as investors. It matters to economies, it matters to people, and it matters to companies. For investors in the FTSE 100, more than 20p in every pound of dividend income comes from the energy industry. For every dollar of investors' capital that is deployed into global capital markets, 10% of it goes to the energy industry defined broadly. And we think that up to one in 10 people globally live in a country whose economy and government budget is wholly or substantially dependent on rents from the global hydrocarbon industry. Deploying resource into modeling the energy transition is all about understanding the interactions between changes to individual parts of the system. If the, the global auto fleet, the global car park transitions to being one that is dominated by electric vehicles, what is that going to mean in terms of the need for extra power generation? Are we going to replace oil with more coal burnt in coal-fired power stations? Or are we going to replace it with zero carbon alternatives like renewables? What is that going to mean in terms of global flows of energy? For us, understanding the energy transition is all about understanding the interaction effects between changes to different parts. A huge uh, advantage of having this model, say, in comparison to using one of the existing reports that, exi that, that, that are out there, is that it gives uh, the, the user the ability to run different scenarios and to test different sensitivities. So if you had two different projections of electric vehicles or two different projections of CCS technologies, you could very easily run them through and understand the impact it would have potentially on your portfolio or on a specific company that you were thinking of investing in. The challenge we're seeing today in the energy system is that of delivering an increasing demand, which is often highly correlated with GDP growth, and that of delivering it in a sustainable way. The global energy system is indeed a very complex system, and it's, uh, it's a very difficult thing to model. So we've spent a lot of time collating all the data, pulling in lots of different uh, sources from across uh, different energy vectors as well as across the, uh, across the globe and uh, th that is probably the biggest part of the challenge. And it's not only important to pull that in but it's important to then calibrate that and be satisfied with your results. So we run a huge amount of sense checks of the outputs not of, of what we see today in the system as well as what we see say in 2050 and make sure that lines up with expectations, industry research amongst others and we run some quite strict tests to ensure that it is within those ranges.